Well, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me in the back rows? Wonderful. Well, welcome to the Kate Gleason College of Engineering Awards presentation. Uh, we begin our ceremony today by acknowledging the traditional territory of the Anandawaka uh, people, or the, great, the people of the Great Hill. In English, they're known as the Seneca people, the keepers of the Western Door. Together with the Mohawk, the Cayuga, the Onondaga, the Oneida, and the Tuscarora, the Seneca make up the sovereign Haudenosaunee Nation. I am so pleased to be with all of you tonight. Uh, even during this pandemic, when it's keeping some of us from celebrating in person, it will not deter us from showing how proud we are of the KGCOE 2020 Alumni Awardees. Tonight's award ceremony is a very special occasion. Not only will we honor six alumni of the last decade, voted as emerging leaders of the Kate Gleason College of Engineering. Uh, we will also induct five alumni into the Academy Department Awards and recognize an industry partner for our Corporate Appreciation Award. In addition, we are also here to celebrate and honor our Kate Gleason College of Engineering Distinguished Alumnus for 2022, the college's most prestigious award. In 2021, the RIT's alumni base uh, exceeded 136,000 individuals around the globe. Tonight's awardees are from points across the US, and since its inception, the KGCOE awards have recognized alumni whose professional success personal achievement and community leadership has brought recognition and honor to the College of Engineering. I'm consistently impressed by the creativity and the innovation and leadership our alumni demonstrate in their fields and I'm grateful for their ongoing engagement and support of the college. Tonight, you're going to hear from alumni and you're going to find you're going to hear how RIT's co-op program and mentorship or relationship with a faculty member or staff member played an important role in the awardee's career and business. RIT has created an environment that allows students to make lifelong connections with faculty and staff KGCOE's innovative academic programs challenge our students across multiple levels and prepare them to graduate as lifelong learners. You will see as we introduce our alumni uh, later in the program, uh, and you'll see this again and again as we introduce them, our awards recognize the distinctive achievements of our alumni and they remind us of the community uh, that they have made as students. These alumni have pursued careers in their programs and have brought recognition to the departments from which they graduated. Our industry partners have demonstrated a long-standing commitment to the employment of our students and alumni and have sponsored research and academic programs to help foster innovation and in student success. The alumni that we, are, that we are recognizing and honoring tonight are helping shape the world's future, and they are leading us toward what is next. Tonight, we also honor the mentors, professors, staff, classmates, and other alumni who help guide them and inspire our awardees. RIT strives to create an environment that allows students to make lifelong connections with faculty and staff, and our innovative academic programs challenge our students. Wait a minute, I said this already, so I'm gonna say it again across multiple levels and prepare them to be lifelong learners. Um, so the hallmark of RIT and KGCOE has been the lifelong connections we've built and our alumni exemplify this commitment to dedication to experiential learning and academic excellence. 
Our alumni and industry partners are true backbones to our college, and it's truly an honor to, uh, it's truly a pleasure to honor those who I know will inspire others to follow in the great tradition of the Kate Gleason College of Engineering spirit. So, let's get on to the awards. Uh, we will begin by recognizing the 2022 Emerging Leaders. This award recognizes alumni who have graduated within the last 10 years and have distinguished themselves from their peers by providing outstanding service to the department, the college, and RIT, or by making important contributions to their profession and their community. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Farhat Sahin, head of the Electrical and Microelectronic Engineering Department, who will kick off by honoring our emerging, a leader, our emerging leader awardees. Farhat, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Doreen. Um, I'm gonna introduce Rui Zhao and uh, First time I met her, I, tr I really forced myself to remember. She came in, I think she was either third year or fourth year. She was BSMS, just trying to get into, Dr. Sahin, I want to do robotics and AI, evolutionary computing stuff. I said, okay, so what do you wanna do? Uh, you know, I hear autonomous things and autonomous cars. So I, said, I, I told her, you came to the right place. <laughs> and she was, she was an international student as well. She's, uh, she was uh, obviously being a female in electrical engineering is already a minority and then being international as well. So she did an independent study with me. She did a MST project, which was autonomous vehicle which had a plant in it. The, the, it would move around based on the uh, sun, based on the you know humidity and all that. So it was it was great for her, and then later on she joined into my research lab, Mabel uh, Multi Agent Biorobotics Lab, just like Matt that later on I'm going to mention. Uh, she did uh, image compression using particle swarm optimization, which is evolutionary computing, and she it was such a pleasant person that I always kept in touch and all my early students, I guess the Facebook era was new, so they're all in the Facebook and I'm still friends with them and she is a superb leader because she is leading Argo AI, who's the company making AI solutions for almost all autonomous vehicles today. Thank you. Are we gonna show? Are we showing video? Yes. Hi, my name is Ray Zhou. Currently, I'm working as a technical program manager in an autonomous vehicle company. I've been working in the automotive space for more than 10 years. I started my career because of an RIT alumni network connection. This Emerging Leader Award means a great deal to me because of the academic aptitude and RIT experience that empowered me to succeed. RIT prepared me for a well-rounded foundation that eventually enabled me to be in this technology leader space in the highly socialized and competitive autonomous vehicle industry. I would like to thank RIT, my alma mater, for having me here virtually, even though I'm not able to be there physically. So with tremendous honor and gratitude, thank you. Thank you for this award. Thank you for Dr. Sahin and enjoy the ceremony. Next, uh, I believe I would like to invite uh, Katie McConkey to the podium. Let's see. Oh, ooh, there's a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sahin, and congratulations, Rui. So I am going to introduce our award for Dimple Joseph. Um, but 
as everybody knows here, probably tomorrow we'll be celebrating our RIT class of 2022. And typically for graduation, uh, most of our faculty are really excited to watch our graduates walk across the stage. We know they're gonna go out in the world and do great things. Um, but sometimes there are graduates that, whose time at RIT maybe seems too short. Um, sometimes there's graduates who we kind of want to just hang on to a little bit longer. Uh, so when Dimple graduated in 2018, you know, a huge piece of our RIT student body heart of our ISE department kind of left with her, and it was a little hard to get excited about her graduating. Um, but after her graduation, we deeply missed Dimple's unforgettable presence, her positive attitude, and her enthusiasm for all things ISE. Uh, however, we quickly realized that she was not gone for good. Uh, Dimple's dedication to, the, our, to RIT, the ISE department, and her profession did not stop when she walked across the stage. As an alumna, she has participated in RIT's Futurist Symposium, she's mentored our students, and she's even guest lectured in some of our classes. Um, this past fall, when I frantically contacted her asking if she could um, mentor our RIT ISE student chapter, because uh, they were organizing a regional conference. She excitedly stepped in and you know, helped out with that process. Uh, and I can safely say that that conference would not have been successful without her help and mentorship. Uh, but Dimple has not only donated her time and expertise, uh, she's also um, financially supported our department significantly, um, even as a very young alumni. Um, she's provided substantial funding for our IISE students to attend conferences, and she's also helped um, when our department has donated to a local food pantry, she matched our donation. Um, and she's only recently graduated. When she's not giving back to the department and, um, and RIT, she's, she's honing her skills as a fierce industrial engineer. Dimple's passions include Lean Six Sigma, digital inclusion, and most recently, the Shingo model for continuous improvement. Not content when jobs are easy, um, she seeks out assignments where she feels she can make the biggest difference. Um, for example, in the height of the pandemic, uh, Dimple moved from Texas to Illinois to be part of Abbott's Binax Now um, rapid test production facility that they were just opening and getting started. Um, she played an integral role in getting that production facility up and running um, to help um, fight the COVID pandemic. So Dimple, we feel very blessed to have had you as a student in our department, and we are very grateful for your continued contributions uh, to the ISE department and RIT as an alumna. Your contributions in your field of work are remarkable for such a young engineer, and we look forward to seeing how you'll progress in the future. It is a big crowd. <laughs> I'm very humbled and honored to be recognized here tonight with a room full of amazing alums. The 12-year-old me who dreamed about coming to RIT had no idea how fulfilling and rewarding it would be to be a tiger. Thank you to my mom and dad and my sister for all the sacrifices you guys made to make this possible for me. I know there were a lot of prayers said to make sure that I would get through this. <laughs> to the amazing faculty and staff at the Industrial Systems Engineering Department for igniting my passion for operational excellence work I get to do every day. It's the curiosity, collaboration, and service I learned here at the Brick City that helps me develop and thrive daily. To my village of mentors, colleagues, friends, here at RIT and Abbott and beyond, I hope God continues to work through me to give back to the community that has given me so much. Thank you again. Congratulations, Dimble. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. T Dr. Tom Gaborski from the <laughs> Biomedical Engineering Department. Okay. Uh oh. 
Oh, there's my page. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McConkey. <laughs> I'm having trouble flipping my pages. There's a couple extra in there. Okay. Um, so I am really proud and excited to announce our, our first uh, and soon second uh, early uh, alumni leaders uh, from biomedical engineering. And so I'd like to talk about Andrea Mazaki. So Andrea was in the second class of biomedical engineers, graduating in the class of 2016. I was uh, fortunate to be one of the first, actually the first permanent faculty hire into biomedical engineering and saw all of these students through uh, to their graduation teaching many of their classes, including biomechanics, biomaterials, and tissue engineering. In fact, Andrea was one of my first research students, so she was a co-op student in my laboratory, continued on part-time, went out to industry for another co-op, and then came back to continue her work. Um, I was really lucky because Andrea was so motivated that she helped push one of our projects through one of my first publications as a faculty member and helping really launch my own career. Uh, she didn't stop at RIT, she continued on to do a PhD later, um, and then after that, Followed a little bit, um, I think maybe some of my own passion carried on to her interests and work. I had started a company and founded a company before coming back to academia. Andrea did as well, and most recently, uh, she is the president of Known Medicine. They closed uh, just over $7 million last year. She's currently fundraising this year, looking to raise her next round of funding, if any of you are interested. Um, and she'll tell you more about that in just a moment in her video. Um, what's really exciting is Andrea combines, I think, the most exciting areas of biomedical engineering, a lot of cell culture and high-content screening for drug molecules, but combining it with AI and automation, uh, bringing all of that together. And, um, and with that, I'd like to transition to Andrea's video, if we could. Hi everyone, this is Andrea. Thank you so much for selecting me as an Emerging Leader Awardee for KGCOE. I'm incredibly honored to receive the award knowing the success of my peers and the quality of the engineering school we attended. I graduated in 2016 with my bachelor's in biomedical engineering. During my time at RIT, I learned the value of both finding and creating opportunities, the importance in building community, and the worth of research, development, and translation of new technologies. The experience in the co-op program and research lab at RIT heavily influenced my decision to go to graduate school and then into industry where I started my own biotech company, Known Medicine. I'm grateful to all of the faculty and staff in KGCOE and especially those in the BME department for their ongoing support, especially that of Dr. Gaborski, who is my mentor during my undergrad studies and continues to be. Thank you all again for selecting me as an emerging leader, and I look forward to continuing to watch the engineering school grow and have influence around the world. Andrea. It's now my pleasure to introduce another emerging leader from biomedical engineering. And so I'd like to tell you about August Allen. So August Allen was also a graduate from our 2016, our second class of biomedical engineers. Um, I as well uh, taught August in biomechanics, biomaterials, and tissue engineering. Um, it was clear from the beginning that August, at, at those days he went by Augie, um, had a lot going on and had a lot of curiosities and a lot of interests and a lot of projects. And the initial classes with me did not go terribly well. However, in tissue engineering in his final year, uh, he was one of our star standout students. And it was clear that he really wanted to combine engineering concepts and cell culture, many of the things that also motivated Andrea. And um, August immediately um, landed job offers and he took a job at a relatively small early stage company called Recursion Pharmaceuticals out in Salt Lake City, Utah. And those outside of this area, the sphere, know nothing of this company at the time. Um, had under 20 employees when August was hired. He was hired in to be their lead automation engineer, which was uh, quite a title for someone with a bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering and just co-op experience. Uh, but I think Augie was, was set to take that on. It was just a few months later, I was at a conference, the Society for Laboratory Automation, where I was looking at trying to buy my own microscopes for my lab, and I had a nice large budget of $100,000, and I was really proud. And I saw August, and he told me, oh yeah, I'm looking at these automated confocal microscopes to do high content screening of drug molecules and this cool company I'm working for. And I asked him, oh, which, which one do you think you're going to buy? And he told me, well, I have a budget of two and a half million dollars. And I'm trying to figure out which robot-assisted microscope I'm going to buy for recursion. And I said, you were an undergraduate in my class just last year. <laughs> you have two and a half million dollar budget authority today 
to buy anything he wanted at this conference, and, and he did. And August went on to basically lead these teams, uh, managing many dozens of people. Recursion went public last spring for $5 billion. Uh, August then has moved on to a new company called Inveda Biosystems, where he's now chief platform officer, uh, responsible for many teams, each of multiple dozens of people across the world, looking at basically screening natural compounds for drug purposes uh, as well. Again, combining kind of cellular high throughput screening, microscopy, and AI. Um, and I think with that, let's uh, look at August's video. Hi, everyone. This is August. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the award and the opportunity to stay in touch with RIT and the College of Engineering. I was at RIT in 2011 through 2016 in the brand new biomedical engineering program. I learned a ton over those five years, made some amazing friends, and had some phenomenal professors and mentors. I'll just give a quick shout out to Dr. Gaborski, who taught three or four courses in the BME program while I was there, and they were all fantastic. I'd also shout out Dr. Petru in the EE department, who is a major advisor of the Space Exploration Research Group where we launched high altitude balloons and built small satellites. After graduation, I moved to Salt Lake City, Utah, and have worked at two different drug discovery startups. I am currently the chief platform officer at Invada Biosciences, where we are exploring nature to find new medicines. I certainly would not have had the opportunities I've had today if it wasn't for my experience at RIT. I've gotten a chance to hone many of the skills I learned there and continue to build in my career. Thank you again for the honor, and I hope you all have a great night. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Alan Nye, Associate Head of Mechanical Engineering, and he will announce our next emerging leader. Thank you, Dad. Uh, Got to find the right page, like everybody. Okay. No, we gotta go. Um, <laughs> took me two. Took me two to figure it out. So we gotta go to you. Yeah, no, I'm down here too. Oh, you got two. Oh yeah, yeah, you're yeah, double. yeah. I'm... Okay. Very, very good. Thank you. Wow, there is a big crowd here. <laughs> so I've heard anyway. Um, okay. So first of all, I'm I'm pleased to. Uh, talk about Kirsten O'Neill uh, as our one of our two mechanical engineering emerging leaders. Right picture. Right. Um, Kirsten, after graduating with with highest honors and with a BS in mechanical engineering, she started her career at Boeing Company, supporting underwater submarines, 747-8F airplanes and classified satellites. Uh, in 2013, she transitioned to SpaceX for the next seven years, where she held a variety of leadership roles within the Falcon program. Most notably, she led the NASA and USAF certification of the first private launch vehicle, Falcon 9, and later the new product introduction of the NASA crew and USAF capable Falcon 9 Block 5 vehicle. In 2020, Kirsten took a new challenge as the program director and energy engineering manager at iSpace Technologies USA, leading the design and development of a medium class lunar lander in support of commercial NASA missions. At the end of 2021, Kirsten started at Sierra Space, a newly formed subsidiary of Sierra Nevada Corporation as the vice president of the Dream Chaser crew program, responsible for the creation and execution of the commercial crew strategic roadmap to ensure all technological development aligns with the global company space transportation vision. At RIT, Kirsten was very active in extracurricular activities. She was on the varsity swim team, as well as the Formula SAE race team where she was co-project manager. Kirsten prepared the cost report for the team and at the competition in Germany, RIT took first place in cost. 
uh, she would advise current students to take advantage of the opportunities outside the classroom, learning to manage your time to allow for extracurricular activities is so incredibly important. Not only can you learn a new skill or hobby, but you can make friends with people that you would normally not meet in the classroom. So it's great pleasure and honor that we recognize Kirsten O'Neill as our 2022 Emerging Leader from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to congratulate Doc Nye on his retirement. I was fortunate enough to get to know Doc throughout my years at RIT while on the Formula SE team. He was an avid supporter of teamwork and tough challenges. His legacy lives on in the RIT graduates today and those in the years to come. As for the award ceremony today, I wish I could be there in person to accept the award and congratulate all of the other awardees. It is an incredible honor to receive the Emerging Leaders Award, and I can confidently say that the foundation I have built my professional career upon over the last decade started at RIT. The five years I spent walking the quarter mile, eating at the SAU, and the late nights in the machine shop working on heat transfer homework. Those are all the precious memories that have stayed with me as I've navigated my career in aerospace. Thanks to the co-op program, I was able to get my start at the Boeing company that led to opportunities at SpaceX for most of my career. Most recently, I started at Sierra Space in Colorado as the vice president of the Dream Chaser crew program. It is an exciting time to be an engineer and RIT is an amazing place to learn how to be part of the ever expanding opportunities in this industry. Thank you again. I am humbled and incredibly grateful to be selected for the Emerging Leaders Award at RIT. Congratulations, Kirsten. Now I'd like to introduce another emerging leader from the Mechanical Engineering Department, Brian Reinheimer. Um, after graduating with highest honors in the, with a BS MNs, which is a dual degree Master of Engineering, Brian started his career at the Boeing Company in St. Louis as a stress engineer working production support for the F-15 fighter aircraft. After five years, Brian took an opportunity with Northrop Grumman in Melbourne, Florida to work on a new design as a stress engineer later being promoted to the durability and damage tolerance lead for the entire program. After three years in Northam Grumman, he was promoted to the durability and damage tolerance lead directly in charge of 10 engineers, as well as setting the D DADT requirements and methods for an entire program of over 100 engineers. Brian maintains that RIT's focus and commitment to the co-op program has a profound, had a profound impact on jumpstarting his career. Having a full year of professional experience before graduation accelerated his transition from an academic to an industry focus, helping him to stand out among his peers. Uh, Brian was also involved with the Formula SAE uh, design competition team and in this, his senior year, um, helped develop the launch control of that vehicle so that it would help us in the acceleration competition. And I'm pleased to say that in Germany, uh, we won the acceleration event due to the, the launch control mechanism that Brian designed. So thank you, Brian, and I'll give it to you for a few words. Thanks, Doc. Uh, I'm honored to uh, accept this award, and thank you to Doc and the college for recognizing me. Um, echoing a lot of the sentiments from the other awardees, uh, my success would not have been possible without the foundation that uh, I grew here at RIT. Uh, principally, the co-op program and the, the interactive uh, Formula SAE team, being able to get that real world experience before you get thrust into industry. Um, without that, I wouldn't have been recognized. I wouldn't have had the experience I needed to hit the ground running 
uh, when I first started at my job, and that has that foundation has uh, accelerated my career in ways that I can't really comprehend. Um, also, the being on the formula team gave me uh, gave me the confidence to not be to not shy away from problems uh, or that seemed insurmountable, and to take challenges on that uh, I wasn't didn't think I would be ready for. And then one of those being moving halfway across the country to an opportunity that I had no idea what was going to happen, and that just really exploded and accelerated my career even more. So. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been a part of this journey with me, including my parents and, and my wife. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. It's my turn. So congratulations, Brian. Uh, wow, what an amazing group of alumni. Um, you are all inspirational. And I've got to tell you, every time I hear your individual stories, I feel so proud. Uh, you are incredibly vital to our college and to RIT and the future. And I wish you all continued success in your career and lives. <laughs> So we're going to move on to the KGCOE Departmental Awards. And these awards recognize outstanding department alumni and industry partners who, through outstanding achievement and contributions, bring honor to the Kate Gleason College of Engineering and our 16,000 alumni in the college worldwide. Uh, before we recognize our awardees, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the department heads who lead our academic uh, departments that are inducting academy, or inducting alumni into the academy this evening. Uh, Dr. Risa Robinson, department head of mechanical engineering. Dr. Iris Rivero, department head of industrial and systems engineering. Dr. Farat Sahin, Department Head of Electrical and Microelectronic Engineering, and Dr. Amlan Ganguly, Department Head of Computer Engineering. Uh, as Department Heads, you continue to provide an innovative and stimulating environment for our students who graduate and excel in their fields. The KGCOE Academy represents one of the many great traditions within our college, and I thank the department heads for their continued support. Please join me in thanking the department heads. <laughs> and now on to the awards. And at this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Alan Nye back to the podium to present our first inductee. I'm going to get you all set up on the right page, I hope. Here you go. Long time no see. Uh, okay. Timing, yeah. Okay, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the Mechanical Engineering uh, Academy winner this year is Alan Franz, who was a 1991 graduate of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, Alan grew up in Pennsylvania, was active in Boy Scouts, soccer, and many outdoor adventures. And while attending RIT, he was engaged with the inception of the solar powered car race team over the course of three years and held many positions within the team, including the race captain, the team captain. And, and I'll never forget the first day of that competition. It was down in Orlando at, at Disney World and there were all these solar car teams there and a lot of, a lot of television and you know, publicity going on. And uh, Alan was just very relaxed and outgoing and, and he and another team member um, started this rap going where they're doing that and singing songs. And, and then when we were in the, on the road, it was a daily drive about 100 miles or more. And at the end of each day, uh, because of the public interest in this, he and I would go to a local news station, TV station, 
and link up with a local, I think it was WHAM here in Rochester, and, and inter, they would interview us how to go today and all that. And, and he, he was just a very smooth, a smooth guy. <laughs> um, upon graduation, he hired into Mobile Chemical Company as a process engineer following two years of co-op in the Rochester area. Then he transferred to several locations and worked his way up through several manufacturing positions within food packaging facilities. He's currently the chief operating officer for Easy Pack LLC, overseeing five manufacturing sites across the US. He says, without question, the co-op program at RIT provided me with a skill set base to launch into a career. Similar to taking AP classes in high school, the co-op program allowed me to have a jump start into an understanding of what it takes to succeed in the workplace. Getting engaged with a solar car team was another layer of understanding on how to apply book math to practical applications. And even more importantly, how to work with many cross-functional students was invaluable. Without a doubt, my experiences at RIT have allowed me to excel in my career. So it's with great pleasure and honor that I recognize Alan Franz this evening as our 19, or as 2022 inductee into the Department of Mechanical Engineering Academy. I think we have a video. Doc, I wanted to really appreciate this uh, honorary award for the Mechanical Engineering Alumni Academy Award. It's a great achievement. I really appreciate that. Uh, really super excited to be an alumni from RIT. And it was 30 years ago today, I walked out of this machine shop thinking it would be the last time I'd be here. And really excited to be back. And I really want to thank not only all the RIT professors, but my family, my wife Michelle, my daughter Luca, and my son Ben. I was able to bring him three here three years ago to see campus and so excited to see how much it's grown. And it's really been a great, great opportunity to be a part of such a great institution. It's rare you see such institutions grow so much over time, and it's, it's, been, it's really awesome. Um, I look forward to being continued part of that growth and really appreciate the opportunity and the award, and uh, go RIT. Um, Alan came back, uh, what was it, a week ago or two weeks ago for Imagine? Seems like yesterday. But, uh, and, and so, <laughs> but uh, so he, he said he could only make one trip from uh, the West Coast. So he did the video while he was here by the, by the formula team. Uh, anyway, so again, congratulations, Alan. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Farad Sahin, head of the Electrical and Microelectronic Engineering Department, to announce the next Academy Award. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> well, well, well. Believe it or not, I knew that I was going to be here someday. Just kidding. <laughs> um, before I tried to put two-minute introduction that Katie uh, asked us to prepare, I said, OK, what do I remember about uh, Matt uh, from his student times? Uh, since we keep in touch, I, I pretty much uh, you know, communicate with him regularly, but I remember a very distinct view of him right in front of my door and looking towards the EE department, putting, so Dr. Sahin, so what are we doing now? He's always, always asking correct question, always digging, um, something, finding something to do for our profession. He was very connected from day one to electrical engineering and microelectronics. He did bachelor's in electrical and minoring in um, microelectronics. But he, uh, he was so into it that he, he said, okay, we have a IEEE chapter. So he basically transformed the chapter. Uh, we, in those times, we had uh, sponsorship from the companies. We did senior design competitions, and he ran that. He ran that very good, um, and he created a precedence for other students to basically continue. But I knew that, uh, I knew that he was gonna be a good leader 
uh, for sure. But one difference between him and other uh, students that I think that they would be leader, I think he knew that he was going to be a good leader too. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he basically, you know, co-opting companies in microelectronics, he, he mostly process, and then he went to Honeywell and other country, other companies. But when he joined Northrop Grumman, I, I see that okay. He knew that he was a leader, but he said, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta do something about this, and people should understand that I am, uh, am I'm gonna be the good leader that they they need." Uh, he did an MBA, and but after that, it, if you look at his uh, career in uh, Northrop Grumman, it's basically uh, it was upward, but it's like an exponential function, so it was up, but then it's like curving so much that he is now heading a fab. Uh, about 600 engineers or more, and he wants more. <laughs> we cannot produce more, but it's, he wants more. And um, funny story, he came here in the 40th anniversary of microelectronics engineering uh, program, and he says uh, in the corridor, uh, we were walking around and showing him some differences uh, that we had. He said, Dr. Sahin, do you see something wrong here? He was pointing out the IEEE uh, student chapter you know, display case. Yeah, our IEEE display chapter, uh, display, IEEE chapter displays. And he says, do you realize that I put that there, and I put that there, and I put that there? <laughs> so it, it was so good, it was so organized, so to the point that mo even after he left, our, our chapter continued the competition, but the, the, the setup, they didn't want to touch. And it's, 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 he says, well, it looks like nothing is done. So. That's why we're gonna basically tear it down and he's gonna help us uh, put it back with new and strong um, artifacts that our students would, would share. Now, I'm now my pleasure to invite you to hear. I think two minutes you need to talk. Not more than that, maybe 30 more seconds. Thank you so much and I am honored to uh, bring you here or invite you here as an Electrical and Microelectronics Engineering Academy winner. Well, that's a warm up. And you've obviously heard me speak because I last a lot more than two minutes. So when I was thinking through what I want to present today, I started thinking through my own career. My first co-op, RIT alumni got me there. My second co-op, RIT alumni got me there. First job, RIT alumni. Second job, RIT alumni. And then when I start, th actually every job I've had has had been the relationship I've had with the alumni of KGCOE. I start thinking about, all right, what have I given back? I've hired, or my organizations have hired over 100 KGCOE grads uh, over the last, whatever, it's 15 years. Um, huge, huge connection, and I keep on going, why do I keep on doing this? I've also hired MIT, Caltech, uh, all the Ivy Leagues, and I go, all right, what is different about KGCOE? What drives them? When I hire a MIT grad, a Caltech grad, I have to set them up with a mentor. I have to have someone watch them for the first three to six months, even PhDs, to the point that they are ready to be self-suspicion. With a RIT grad, I send them in the lab. I set them with their own projects. And it's something about the grit and the drive, the connection to the hands-on that is dramatically different. I'm not just saying this because I'm at RIT, it is absolutely true. RIT is the one school that I just take the students and go, all right, go. Here's your project, here's your charter, here's your rules, responsibility, and go. It's something about, I don't know if it's the abuse, the long hours in the lobby. <laughs> Um, the multiple times crying, waiting for senior design projects to be um, graded. Uh, but out of all seriousness, there's something unique about this university, incredibly hands-on. Um, when we were walking through earlier today, there was a comment from my father-in-law that um, the professors are hands-on. They care. It's not just a smoke and mirror conversation. They care about the students. They pull out the red carpet for everyone. That is unique. So again, I appreciate everything my family's done. I appreciate everything the professors have done. And um, thank you for the award.
And now it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Amlan Ganguly to the podium. I did it correctly. Thank you, Farad. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce the 2022 inductees into the Computer Engineering Department Academy. Our first inductee this evening is Bhushan Mehendale. Bhushan is unable to be with us uh, here in person, as he and his wife Sonam just welcomed their daughter Eva into their family just a few weeks ago. So a big congratulations to Bhushan and Sonam. Bhushan received his dual Bachelor and Master of Science degrees in computer engineering from RIT in 2006. He is currently a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft's Azure firmware organization. His diverse work experience includes working for the Microsoft HoloLens, building real-time video encoding and live streaming technology at Amazon, and as a vice president of engineering for Esper, a startup focusing on Android device management. Bhushan shared with me that his greatest professional accomplishment was when the Microsoft HoloLens V1 was shipped. He says it tested all of his technical and leadership skills literally every day for two years. As part of this project, he created a new team to do the boot up firmware for the product. And in the end, the amazing teamwork and true grit helped him achieve his goal. Bhushan is immensely proud of his team's work. He shares that it's been more than five years since the product has shipped and he still says that he still gets goosebumps to this day when he thinks about it. Bhushan credits RIT for laying a solid foundation for his professional success. The talented professors in the computer engineering department, that does not include me because he graduated before I was here, um, <laughs> department created a wonderful and healthy environment for him, sharing their best knowledge and guiding and pushing him to excel. In addition, he made amazing friends and collaborated with them in class, and together they challenged each other to do their best. Bhushan also recognizes the co-op program for helping him get assimilated into the workforce, as we just heard from the previous inductee as well. And he appreciates the wonderful support throughout they provided him in the process of landing co-ops and his first job. Bhushan has remained an active alumnus, and uh, he serves on the industrial advisory board for the department, where I have the pleasure of actually interacting with him regularly, and uh, he's just an absolute uh, pleasure, he asks all the right questions. When he asks a question to the ind in the Industrial Advisory Board, I go like, yes, that's what I want to answer because I know the answer to that question. So please join me in congratulating Bhushan Mahendale on his induction into the Computer Engineering Department Academy. <laughs> Perhaps we can stream the video. Thank you, Dr. Ganguly, for the award. I feel honored to have been inducted into the Department of Computer Engineering Academy. I'm sorry I'm unable to join all of you in person today. Our first little one, Eva, was born a few weeks back and she's keeping us on our toes. There's a funny story of how I ended up graduating as a computer engineer. You know, when I joined RIT, I was a computer science major. And a quarter into it, when quarters were still a thing, I started looking at courses CS majors typically took in the second and the third year and so on. And it hit me that this major was taking me more and more away from hardware and more towards a software-centric view of the world. And this was not something I was passionate about. I really wanted to do something that spanned over both hardware, software, and their interfacing. I still remember the day I walked into the then CEHOD, uh, Dr. Andrea Savakis, arguing my case of allowing me to switch majors. And as the C department has always been, the bar was very high, and Dr. Savakis was upfront about it. He cut me to a deal to hang in there for a few more quarters and prove to him that I had the grades to make the switch. I did eventually, and that's when I was able to make the switch to CE. The point is that all the professors I have the pleasure to take classes with always try to raise the bar. And even today, I remember the wonderful interactions we had. May it be control systems with Dr. Coburn, architecture with Dr. Shaban, computer vision with Dr. Savakis, VLSI with Dr. Shu or Dr. Lukoviak, senior projects with Dr. Chernikovsky, digital electronics with Dr. Reddy, or networking with Dr. Yang. Furthermore, I was very lucky to have professors that went out of the way to ensure I succeeded. In fact, I was able to land my first co-op thanks to the efforts taken by Dr. Savakis to find an opportunity for me. And I cannot thank Dr. Yang enough for all the encouragement he provided me through my master's thesis. 
As with professors, students are equally important to an academic institution. And I'm very grateful to RIT for surrounding me with wonderful peers, some of whom have become lifelong friends. As you can see, it, it takes a village to raise a child. Huge credit for RIT for whatever little success I have been able to achieve in my career. And as a child of this institution, I always feel an immense sense of giving back to it. I try to help out on the CE department's industrial advisory board from time to time, or come to campus for recruitment drives on behalf of my company to give opportunities to students who are ready to spread their wings and fly. And I'd encourage other alumni to contribute back on the similar lines. Again, I really feel honored to be inducted into the academy. It really means a lot to me. Thanks RIT, my teachers, friends, and family for helping me succeed in my career. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. I will now quietly start praying that little Eva will want to study at her dad's alma mater when she grows up. Thank you again. Right, our next inductee into the Computer Engineering Department Academy is Herbert Klumpe III. Herb is a principal engineer at the Air Force Research Laboratory in Rome, New York. After earning his BS in computer engineering from RIT in 1988, Herb joined RADC, which is now the Air Force Research Laboratory, as a full-time computer engineer. Herb had co-opt co for RADC while at RIT. During Herb's tenure at the research laboratory, he has worked on various projects and in several areas. In particular, Herb has engaged with the military wargaming community, specializing in their cyber domain. In 2019, Herb became the principal advisor to the AFRL RIG division chief on topics of modeling and simulation, wargaming, and international programs. As a part of that role, he currently manages a collaborative effort with the Estonian Ministry of Defense. Herb shares that his greatest professional accomplishment is becoming the portfolio manager for the cyber science and technology core technical competency. Senior leadership at the Air Force Research Laboratory choose people for this position who are capable of seeing the broader picture and being able to form a strategy that enables growth. Herb says what helped him achieve this position was working in a variety of positions in the lab and learning what was important, understanding the broader Air Force mission and how the work was relevant and important to the lab's core customer base. Looking back, Herb recounts that RIT was pivotal in allowing him to apply his engineering skills towards a diverse set of opportunities presented to him in his career with the Air Force. Fundamental skills such as computer programming prepared him to take on the web development in the 1990s as new web internet technology was emerging. The rigorous curriculum gave him ability to look at problems and find creative solutions which has helped him throughout his career and continues to help him to look for new opportunities where he can make a difference. Herb has also been an active member of the Computer Engineering Industrial Advisory Board, and I value his perspectives and his vision that he brings into these meetings. Please join me in congratulating Herb on his induction into the Computer Engineering Department Academy. Herb, please take the stage for a few words. Wow, it is a big crowd. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, first, I just need to thank everybody from when I started, 1983, as a freshman. Showed up here for the first time, never came for that freshman tour. Saw the campus and said, wow, this is, this is big. This is bigger than the little dairy farm that I grew up on down in the Catskill Mountains. And um, my parents supported me, got me through college, five-year program, co-op program with quarters, and uh, got the degree in computer engineering. Followed that up uh, working at the, for the Air Force, uh, getting a master's degree at SU, a little closer to home than I could drive to. Um, and you just heard the list of things that I've worked on. A uh, tremendous number of opportunities that I took. Every time something was changing, um, the opportunity to work in a photonics lab, even when I was a co-op student, I was working on problems looking at deformable mirrors that were used in telescopes and large optic systems, and then the web happened, and I had that chance to be on the initial teams in the 90s, uh, building things for the internet, and just taking on that challenge, and then I was given the opportunity to manage the information assurance program, and I took that in 2001. I did that for five years, it was kind of an operational type job, dealing with antivirus every day, 
But after that, took the advantage to go work in cyber operations, uh, working with that group, and I have been working with that ever since. And you've heard about the, the job that I did as this core technical competency leader, looking at the technologies across the cyber portfolio for the Air Force Research Laboratory, choosing which technologies were the right ones to do and to work on for the lab as we uh, continue to develop that. Uh, I left that job in 2019 to be a principal advisor for the topics that Amlan just talked about, and I continue to work in that, uh, in that role. Um, but it was the foundation of being here at RIT, doing the co-op programs, coming back to school, working on the projects, the late nights, the super late nights. I remember sleeping on the floor in the lab. It happens. That's part of what, what it's about to be here, and that's what made me take every opportunity. I took that opportunity when I came here and uh, continue to do that. Uh, the Industrial Advisory Board that I'm part of, uh, we meet twice a year now, and I think we're going to increase the amount of time uh, that we're going to be doing that, meeting with each other um, during the course of the year, tracking the program. I've been doing that for almost 20 years now uh, that I've been part of that, and I look forward to that, coming back to the Image Festival. I was here uh, for this most recent one. Um, I'm here with my girlfriend, Sue, and uh, um, she and I have come out to that. She can't wait till the fall event. Hopefully it takes place and everybody can come here in a post-COVID world because pumpkin chucking is her favorite thing. She wants to see those launched from those uh, catapult systems. So hopefully that takes place this fall. We'll be back here this fall. And I look forward to spending time uh, continuing to work with this program because um, it's what got me to where I am today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Herb, and thank you, everyone. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Brian Thorne from the Industrial and Systems Engineering Department to the podium to present our next inductee. Thorne with an E, are we expecting somebody else? Thorne. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here to welcome Matt Culp as the newest member of the ISE Academy. Uh, Matt graduated from our program in 1995, which means uh, he would have started here in 1990. And I think about 1990, it sounds like such a long time ago. Uh, 1990, um, I didn't need these things. <laughs> and. My hair was completely brown. By the time Matt graduated in 1995, it was completely gray. I've never, <laughs> I've never held him personally responsible. But there may have been a cause and effect. Back then, uh, I remember Matt was a very busy guy, academically, socially, and athletically. When he started here, he, he played baseball on the RIT team, <clears throat> but apparently that, that didn't hurt enough because after his first year, he switched over and became a, a very active member of RIT's rugby club. Um, the rugby club, I think, uh, served as an important athletic and social outlet for Matt, but probably didn't, do, didn't make many contributions to his academic goals. Uh, however, the faculty at the time was very interested in Matt's rugby career. Uh, we enjoyed seeing Matt come back to class on Monday after the weekend tournaments, uh, wondering whether he'd be limping, wondering which finger would have a splint, uh, wondering if an ear had been sewed on over the weekend. Um, so we took great interest in that. Occasionally, you probably didn't know this, but occasionally there was wagering. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, through hard work and persistence and some shrewd decision making, Matt has had tremendous success at a company called St. Ange. And if you haven't heard of St. Ange, uh, I can assure you that companies like Walmart and Amazon have heard of St. Ange. They're a leading player in the consulting field with uh, specialties in material handling, uh, distribution, logistics, and supply chain. Has anybody heard lately about supply chain concerns? I'm, I'm guessing business is good for you these days. 
Uh, we've been fortunate in my department that Matt has seen fit to share his success with our program. Uh, here's how. About 15 years ago, Matt came to understand that St. Ange needed incoming technical talent that was ready to go to work immediately. Uh, he didn't feel that their organization was seeing that from their current recruiting pool, which included schools like Penn State, Lehigh, and Pitt. Nothing against those places, they're fine schools, but he thought he would come back here and give our folks a shot. Um, so, Matt returned to RIT, and it's become almost an annual event, and he talks to our graduating students about what they're looking for at St. Ange. He's taken a chance, he hired a couple initially, and he and St. Ange seem to be very happy with the results. Uh, they've been back just about every year, and at this point, the organization has hired about a dozen of our folks. Uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to Matt for opening up these exciting and challenging opportunities to our graduates and for being such a good friend to our ISC program. Please help me welcome Matt to the podium. All right, well, good evening, everybody. Um, first, I should thank uh, Brian, Dr. Rivero, the ISC department for the nomination. It is a tremendous honor. And um, when I got the email and uh, read that it was for an award, I was uh, really excited and, and a little bit humbled. And for a moment, I was wondering if Brian was punking me a little bit. But uh, <laughs> after a phone call, I called and made sure that it was, it was legitimate. Um, so thank you, Brian. Uh, I'd like to thank my, my family, friends, my kids who made the five hour drive up to support me and be here. Appreciate you guys. Uh, my mom and dad watching online. At least there's a 54.6% chance they're watching if they figured it out. <laughs> um, and the, uh, thank you for the confidence um, and the values that you gave me through a, a strong Christian upbringing. So love you guys. Uh, so yeah, RIT. Um, it, it's an amazing place. And RIT the past, you heard about it from Brian. Uh, Mom, Dad, that stuff he's talking about, I was building my professional network of the future. <laughs> That's what I was, I was doing and studying hard. I really wasn't a library. Um, but yeah, it just it gave that foundational degree that you've all heard about that allowed us to, to start our, our careers. And then RIT of today, is, it's just amazing. I come back, I love coming back every year. There's, it seems to be a new building every time I come up here. Um, until that other Matt talked, I was pretty proud of the dozen people I hired. I didn't know he hired about two million. <laughs> But uh, we will keep coming back. We're only 150 people strong, so that's a, a pretty good percentage still. And uh, this, the, the, it, they, they continue to turn out those, those graduates that are ready to start on, on day one. Um, I feel like I now, this is ad living, but I now need to say we get tremendous graduates from Pitt since my daughter and fiance graduated from Pitt last week. <laughs> so, um, we really do. But uh, RIT, as he said, they come and they're ready ready to go to work. And then RIT of the future, you know, that to me is, is my son. He just started, finished his first year in biomedical engineering. You need to meet your professor. And I'm just excited <laughs> to see what the, uh, the RIT journey is for him and joining this incredible um, community of RIT alumni. And there are a lot of people here, um, as others have said, but what took me was how many smart people are here. I mean, my goodness, the uh, the stuff that you all are talking about, the stuff that you all do, it's just amazing. It, it makes me really proud. The RIT degree just continues to pay dividends. Um, it's more and more valuable every year, and I'm sure that everyone here is just super proud of it. So to uh, be able to give back in any small way, I consider it a privilege. To be um, recognized for it and honored for it, it truly is humbling, as, as people said. So um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. Who do we welcome to the podium now? I'd like to welcome Dean Edwards. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Well, congratulations to all of our uh, Department Academy awardees. Uh, the Academy Awards are such a special tradition 
And so just uh, let's give all of our awardees a round of applause. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Corporate Appreciation Award, another important but relatively recent tradition of the K. Gleason College of Engineering. Uh, the Corporate Appreciation Award recognizes a KGCOE industry partner who has demonstrated a longstanding commitment of employing our students and alumni as well as sponsoring research and academic programs uh, to help foster innovation and student success. As you know, RIT's connection to industry is the cornerstone of our engineering, uh, students' engineering experiential learning experience. And we are exceedingly grateful uh, to have the support of so many outstanding companies and corporate partners. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Giante Venkatraman from the Department of Electrical and Microelectronic Engineering to present the Corporate Appreciation Award to TTM Technologies. Giante? Thank you. I somehow missed these pages, but uh, technology to this rescue. I have it on my phone, <laughs> except I need this. <laughs> so, okay, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce our uh, corporate awardee, that's TTM Technologies. TTM is a company, an RF company in, uh, does this work? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if I had to lower it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's an RF company based in Syracuse, uh, New York, and it focuses on uh, design and manufacture of microwave components and assemblies, and also a fast turnaround for PCB assemblies, PCBs, and backplanes, and hence the acronym TTM, that's time to market, to become the big and rapid uh, change to technology. Now, the alliance that we have, and here to accept the award, there's a team from TTM. There are two directors of engineering here. That's Bill Kopich and Dr. Tom Lingle, and the HR manager, Alex Budwe, and uh, one of our alums, that's Jessica DeSignor, who graduated in 2007 with me, she did graduate studies, and then she joined directly TTM, and she stayed there ever since, which is a testimony to the industry. For 15 years, she's been there. And she's there as one of their star engineering, engineering employees. Now, TTM has an alliance with, uh, with us through hiring co-ops, full-time jobs, and as uh, Doreen said, uh, sponsoring research. Now, the, um, the, 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 on a personal level, there has a, there's a strong alliance between my lab and TTM. There's like an invisible pipeline between the two, and TTM and my lab have become synonyms. The students go there for their co-op, and they come back to me, and they do graduate work, they go back there, and then finally some of them get employed. Over, just over the past three years, there have been about 16 dual degree students who have co-opted in TTM and have done graduate work with me. And there are about four of them who are now employed, they're full-time employees. That's excluding Jessica, who joined much earlier, 15 years ago. And uh, they, they really love it there. They bond with Bill and uh, Tom. And the nice part is that they get some really meaningful and challenging projects when they're on co-op. And they learn a lot from modeling um, with using very sophisticated electromagnetic tools and state-of-art uh, techniques for bringing it to market. So TTM is time to, uh, time, time to market. For me, it's textbook to market. <laughs> they learn from me, and then they learn how to market it. It's really awesome, the company. And um, other than that, they do um, 
hire students from manufacturing at CET, and they then they have they there are four full-time employees of EE in the digital and text en test engineering groups and seven full-time engineers from CET. So if you walk down the hallway, just students whom I know waving, saying, Dr. Venkatraman, hi, Dr. Venkatraman. So there are so many of them there. So it's, uh, and uh, let's see. We send them some of our best students, students who have uh, uh, even won the uh, Outstanding Undergraduate uh, Scholar Awards. There's one there who's now uh, a full-time employee, and of course he's now motivated to do his PhD. He's heading to Purdue, but probably he'll be back there. Another one went to uh, Michigan for his PhD. So there's a really nice repertoire we have between the two companies. And Alex, of course, is very great, really great. She's our HR manager. Anytime there's an opening, she calls me and she writes to me, and I know these jobs go fast. I immediately round up my students and say, write to her. And fortunately, they like her, like what they see, and they hire them. And so, so there are, there's another, another thing is TTM has two parts to it. One is the aerospace and space division, which requires US citizenship. There's the other part, which is the wireless divi division, which does not require citizenship. So our master's students who are international find a way of getting in there as well and getting jobs there as well. Right now, there's one heading for a full-time job into that division and another one who's going on a co-op for in the summer. So that's another great partnership because it's hard to come by companies which can support international students as, as well. And uh, the next is the funding that we receive from TTM. Uh, they have supported me for research, and recently, again, this year, it started another three-year contract with them. And in addition to that, they support our freshman practicum projects. They've supported senior design projects for me, and they also uh, support the student organizations that the Society of Women Engineers and NSB, the, the National Society for Black Engineers, and they have events organized for them. So they really are doing a lot with RIT uh, in funding and in hiring our students, and they are really great to work with. Um, I think everybody in my lab know Bill and Tom, and they talk about them all the time. Today also they came to visit, and uh, I rounded up my students so they could say hi to them. And so, um, it is really my great pleasure and honor to introduce them for this Corporate Partnership Award. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much. We are so happy to be here tonight and very touched by Dr. Van Kentraman's words. Um, we are so excited to receive this award and be here. Again, my name is Alex Budway. I work in HR at TTM. I've been there 15 years. Originally, we were Anarin, Anarin Microwave, um, purchased by TTM about five years ago. When I joined the company, this relationship was really already underway with Professor Van Kentraman. Um, I can't thank her enough for her continued support. When I first met her, I could see her passion for teaching and her kindness. Um, I came right into the program. She brought me right into her lab. And then from there, every career fair I attended, she sent her students down to visit us. And so always made me feel welcome. And ever since then, 15 years flew by. Um, so I, I really am thankful for her and our friendship and our relationship. RIT continues to be the primary university that we recruit from. Um, as you heard, a variety of disciplines, so electrical, mechanical, microelectronic, and industrial. The quality of RIT students, um, the hands-on curriculum, and the strength of the university co-op program has been instrumental with um, our success and our partnership. RIT is our most successful pipeline to filling full-time engineering positions. Our co-op program has had full support from the top down ever since I can remember and join the company. 
Um, and tonight is a true testament of the support of the program with everybody that I'm with. Um, our managers take great pride in providing mentorship to our students and exposing them to the field of engineering, giving them real, meaningful, challenging work. Many times I do the exit interviews with our interns when they leave at the end of the summer, um, and they're always telling me, Alex, we love the culture, um, the doors are always open, uh, we can ask anybody any question, people are willing to take the time and educate us. So I hear that time and time again, and it's just wonderful. Um, so on behalf of TTM, I just want to say we are honored to be selected as the corporate partner. We have worked really hard to create a great culture at TTM where RIT students can gain a well-rounded experience in return for the future. So again, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations, Alex and TTM, uh, and thank you for joining us. We're getting to the last leg of our journey tonight, and it is my pleasure and honor to introduce the 2022 Kate Gleason College of Engineering Distinguished Alumni Award. The Distinguished Alumni Award is presented annually to the graduate who has brought distinction at the highest level to the Kate Gleason College of Engineering and to RIT through professional, community, and philanthropic achievements. Our awardee joins a select group of exceptional alumni who inspire us through their innovation, creativity, and leadership. RIT's distinguished alumni have built legacies and improved the world through their contributions to the advancements of their field. These alumni create new possibilities, paving the way for our students' bright future. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Robert Spina for this esteemed award. Bob graduated in eight, uh, 1889. <laughs> let's, try, let's try this again, Bob. Bob graduated in 1989 with a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering. And since October of 2020, uh, he has served as the Chief Information Officer of Boed Specialty, a New York City-based company that provides risk evaluation and related services for professional liability coverage, including directors, officers, uh, management liability, errors in emission, health care, and casualty line insurance. He earned his master's degree at RIT while working at Kodak and went on to get his PhD in computer engineering at the University of Buffalo. Bob has been very active in the college over the years. Uh, he was an assistant professor of electrical engineering. Uh, both he and his wife, Michelle, also an RIT graduate, serve on the KGCOE National Council, which is an advisory board to the dean. In 2013, Bob was inducted to the Department of Electrical and Microelectronic Engineering Academy, uh, and he was the KGCOE Dean's Alumni Speaker on Big Data Meets Music Intelligence in 2012. I'd like a repeat of that. I want to know what that is all about. So I'd love to hear that talk. Um, Bob is both a member of the Lo Loyal Tiger Society and the Sentinel Society. And uh, joining us this evening is a fellow KGCOE Distinguished Alumnus, Michael Field, President and CEO of Raymond Corporation. And uh, we've asked him to share a few words about Bob and about receiving the Distinguished Alumni Award. So uh, with that, Mike, please join me at the podium. Or please take over the podium. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. It's warm in here, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm honored to have been asked to share uh, some comments about Bob and the Distinguished Alumni Award. Having served with KGCOE National Council with Bob, I know his passion lies in his entrepreneurial spirit. With over 30 years of experience in high technology startups, building teams and technologies, Bob's focus has been on bringing disruptive technologies into established industries. 
If you take a look at Bob's LinkedIn page, which is very impressive, by the way, I see experiences such as digital transformation executive, founder, startup leadership, venture capital funding, engineering process, and you can go on. Not only is he chief information officer of Bowhead Specialty, Bob also serves as founder, chief technology officer, and strategic advisor for Fairview Technology, LLC. Earlier in his career, Bob was a technology leader, a technical leader at many successful technology startups. Such roles included vice president of engineering at SS, a leading provider of automated energy assessments for commercial and residential buildings, vice president of engineering at music intelligence firm, The Echo Nest, acquired by Spotify, probably where the talk came from, Vice President of Technology and Founding Member of BBN Technologies, acquired by Raytheon. Vice President of Engineering and Co-Founder of Ramp, a software service provider for multimedia content optimization, acquired by Sexense. Senior Director of Architecture for Sonexis, acquired by Compunetics and consulting engineer for integral access acquired by Telco Systems. So there's a trend. Um, Bob does lots of great things and puts them all together. Bob says his career highlight to date was at BBN, where he was an opportunity to take advanced research from the defense and intelligence sector and find commercial uses for it. Bob says it allowed him to participate in the whole process of technology, business, production, and sales, and BBN, BNN successfully started four new companies in six years from the ground up. That's pretty busy. Bob, you had an amazing career, and as a fellow distinguished alumnus, I welcome you into the fold of 39 other distinguished alumni from the Kate Gleason College of Engineering. They asked that I say a little bit about what be, becoming and being a distinguished alumni uh, is about to me. Um, I, I think probably the best way to, to talk about it is reflection. You know, how did you get here? What, what was it about? How, what was the road like? And it really started with RIT, um, the challenges that we had, uh, the friendships we made, I had a few of those bumps and bruises along the way, too. Um, I don't think there were any bets about me relative to uh, coming to class, whether it was going to be broken or, or something else. But uh, all sorts of people that we met, um, people that I'm still close with now, um, one, of the, one of the guys that I, I actually uh, lived with when I was here ended up being the best man at my wedding. Um, I married a young lady from here. She was a computer science uh, engineer and we have two wonderful boys together. So it's, it's created the confidence for me to continue on and, and do what I do. Um, it's almost like you're not really planning things come together. You make contacts, you talk to people, you have ideas, you look at great new students coming out of school. Uh, Raymond also hires an awful lot of students, um, and, we, and we help in any way we can because it's such a good relationship. So with that, Bob, this is all about you, and, but Dr. Edwards has to come up first. <laughs> okay, let's see what I've got to do. First of all, I have to say thank you, Mike, uh, and then Bob, your generosity, dedication, and commitment to your family, your work, and your community sets an inspiring example for all of us here at RIT. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Kate Gleason College of Engineering, please join me in, please join me in presenting you the 2022 Distinguished Alumni Award. says, Bob, I would like to invite you to say a few words. Right. <laughs> it will be a few. Uh, fortunately, I took off my glasses. I can't tell how many of you are actually there. 
Uh, so I'm very honored to uh, receive this award. RIT has a very uh, special place in my heart. Uh, we have uh, a long history and a little varied uh, uh, part of it, sort of three different interactions with RIT. One, when uh, I was a very young engineer and RIT would send uh, faculty out to a Kodak plant after work and it gave uh, hundreds or thousands of people an opportunity to advance their degree that probably uh, never would have made the time or had the time to be able to do it. And so I'm thankful to RIT for that. Uh, I was then fortunate uh, at that time to fall in with the glitterati of the EE department, Venkat, uh, Madhu, uh, Salem, uh, Walker, uh, and others, if I forgot you, who gave me the opportunity to, uh, to teach while uh, encouraged me to get my PhD. And um, that was a very uh, important era of, for my learning as a, and growth as an individual. In addition to academics, uh, seeing uh, that was my view of the inside out on freshmen and how uh, the undergraduates uh, are thought of at RIT. Uh, very, um, uh, very impressed at the dedication and the passion uh, to be um, what would be today called a uh, servant leader. I mean, which is really what teachers are. Your job is to make uh, other people successful along the way, even when it's hard <laughs> to do that, which serves yourself you know, very well in life. So I uh, thank RIT again for that opportunity for it. Uh, and in the, the elder uh, statement years, uh, as Doreen has pointed out, uh, <laughs> um, another opportunity was to, uh, to really um, interact with uh, the entrepreneurs and uh, individuals that want some mentorship uh, uh, along the way as they see people trying to start companies. I, I'll get a name here and there to, to talk to, to help guide them uh, through that process, hopefully well. And I would say uh, three, you know, uh, the two tenets that I'm really happy with RIT. I'd like the, the dedication to the continuous education. I would also call it active learning as well. Uh, when you have a career in technology, as you know, this long, I've done six, eight, ten uh, companies, um, and you follow the arc of technology that started as telecom, that went to media, that went to cloud computing, that went to in, uh, AI. Now I'm applying that to uh, uh, risk management in an insurance company. <laughs> All of these things I would never have thought about on the path, so um, I think that's a theme um, that's very important. And then uh, I have seen, um, I think, what is a big change in uh, just in the times, but glad to see RIT has followed it, in this entrepreneurship and the, um, the positive uh, thought to every undergraduate that you can come out and if you've got a good idea, make it happen. And uh, one thing that Matt said, as we all know in this room, um, I've hired a lot of engineers uh, over the years at these companies. Um, you know, RIT engineers stack up with the best of the best, and that should be something uh, we're all proud of. So thank you very much. I'm very honored to get this, and I hope I can continue to uh, contribute. Wow. Thank you, Bob. Um, what you shared with us today is truly reflects, reflects how alumni continue to help enhance the quality of education for our students. So let's have another round of applause for our 2022, uh, we call it the DAA Award. So Bob. So the KGCOE uh, admires and appreciates all of its alumni and we know how incredibly vital they are to the college and its future. Uh, the alumni we recognize today hit the ground running uh, the minute they stepped foot on RIT campus and they haven't stopped since graduation and they have done it again in their careers. So I commend you all. By using your RIT education, you support and benefit the companies that you work for and the customers you serve 
whether it's coming up with new products or finding new ways to solve problems. I'd also like to take a, thank, uh, take a moment to thank everyone with us tonight, uh, those who are here at the Labazo Alumni House, as well as the, those who are watching virtually. I guess to watch virtually, I would look that way. Uh, because you have supported and encouraged and cheered on the honorees during their years at RIT and the years uh, beyond. The foundation that you provided helped them get where they are today. So thank you. We look forward to watching our honorees continue and do great things for the world. And I hope you all have a wonderful night. So thank you very much. Thank you.